wrap was a fast one. We still have actually 30 seconds, but let's give them to the judges. Maybe they have more questions. How many do you need to do manually? So what is, are the false positives uh, of your crawler for the, for the pictures? We're still working on the web technology. In terms of false positives, we, we can do exact matches on ph photographs right now, and we're, that technology is scalable to any other media type. Yeah, how does ownership work for um, you know files that, that happen on third-party platforms? To say, you know, if you have an Instagram photo, does Instagram hold some rights uh, for the ownership, or you know, does just the photograph taker hold the rights? And you know, how do you think about monetization on the author side? So, there's there's two ways to think about what you just asked about. Number one is how do we access the digital content. And the other one is the monetization aspect. And the access is currently we have a web app where people who have a pain point right now can upload their work. The other area is that we need to go to the marketplaces or the actual apps themselves. So we have an API for that, where marketplaces that want to make it easy for creators to protect their property can integrate with us for their API and they can actually register and claim their digital property. On the other side, there's a lot of marketplaces who want to sell digital property but they don't have the capability to authenticate the, the, the uniqueness of it. And we give that capability with our web crawl. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, I think you, you mentioned Instagram. So can you give us a real example? How, how would it work on Instagram? And how, how does that kind of describing a digital identity or ownership layer work throughout the life of that digital file throughout the internet? Okay. I'll give you two examples. Number one is, you know, photography marketplaces, there's a specific photography marketplaces I have in mind where they focus on professional photographers who do very nice photos. And it turns out that news agencies want these photos immediately and they can't license them very quickly. All they can do is go to that site, say, I like this. Can you verify that it was in this location at this time? Because maybe there was something that was happening right then and there and they want to have that geolocation tag. But then once they figure that out, they want to be able to get the licensing from that photographer, and that's not possible today. So that's a marketplace use case. A second use case is that you know digital artists they currently sell art for in the range of ten to fifty thousand for a limited edition. This is video art, just a video file. And up until now, there hasn't been a way for them to sell that, and for galleries and the whole ecosystem to trust each other, except now by a scribe. Uh. Are you using uh, blockchain technology or those kind of things? Because like, uh, everybody's talking about decentralized trust organization and, uh, and you didn't mention it here, so I was wondering. We're starting with blockchain, but when we roll on our first B2B customer, we'll break the blockchain if we continue using it. So we have a different technology lined up. So you're the, trust, you're the, the unique point of trust, the third party that proves that some people own the rights. We never want to be in the way. So we're building a federation using the same type of technology as blockchain so that we aren't in control because it should be the users who own their data, not us. Your background is largely in FinTech. How did you, how did you come onto this problem and to the solution? I started this because in the past I, I built a dozen banks around the world. And they had impact in the countries that I had built those banks in. And I wanted to do something more. Building a 13th bank wasn't something that inspired me the same amount as looking for the next thing that could actually help the broadest swath of people across the broadest range of industries. And looking at the trends, it's all going digital. And it dawned on me when working with my two co-founders that this is a new potential property class that can raise anybody from anywhere around the world up. And you can have kids in Africa learning how to code and being able to sell that app anywhere in the world now using our technology. And that is one of the reasons why I think this is so compelling for me to devote my time to. Uh, uh, provocative question. Uh, don't you think that ownership is going away? Sorry, I didn't understand. Ownership is going away. Like uh, we don't own things anymore and we don't talk. Uh, Beatles music collection right now is worth two billion. It originally was worth 50 million. Somebody's going to bid 2 billion for the rights on that one. Okay, before you run off stage, thanks for the questions.
there is a question which got uploaded a fair amount of times. How do you compete with Creative Commons? Well, this is interesting because we're probably going to be cooperating with them in the very next few months. We've been in discussions with them and they're very um, excited about what this can do for the non-monetizable world where people just want to give their creation to the world um, but they still want the attribution side and we can help them with that. Okay, that was a clear answer. Thank you very much. Let's have a look. So nearly half the people in the room love your idea. They say good idea. Oh no, actually, good idea, but they see a little more challenges. But 29% actually, oh, it's growing. More than 30% say it's wow, awesome idea. So have a thumbs up and have a great day. And if there are any questions, he's going to be at the expo, the same as all other startups. Have a great day and thanks for pitching. Thank you.